there are literally hundreds of different APIs available under the Google umbrella. Things like Drive, Calendar, Google Cloud Platform, Maps, and YouTube, just to name a few. But when you log in a user on Firebase, you only get access to a limited set of read-only data, like their Google Plus profile. In today's video, you'll learn how to work with the Google Calendar API on the behalf of a user. But more importantly, you'll learn how to expand the scope of Firebase Auth to work with virtually any other Google API. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and there will be a one-of-a-kind shirt giveaway with this video. All you have to do is leave a comment below letting me know which Google API you want to see covered next, and I'll randomly pick a winner via live stream tomorrow. Let's start things off by taking a look at what we're actually building today. It's currently Saturday night, and I don't have anything additional on my calendar for today. But if we skip ahead to Monday, you'll see that I have a handful of appointments. The goal of this lesson is for you to be able to log in a user with Firebase and then programmatically update or read items in the calendar. The inspiration for this video comes from a real life tour operator based in New York City. After they sign up, they need to build out a complex itinerary for their trip. Now there's actually a couple different ways you can go about this, but I'm gonna show you the approach that I think is most developer friendly and flexible. As you can see here, when we log in, it looks exactly like we're logging in with Firebase and the Google Auth provider. But that's actually not what happened. Instead, we used the Google Services JavaScript library to sign in. That gave us a JSON web token that we could then pass off to Firebase to log in as a Firebase user. The reason we do this is because we're going to use the Google Services library to make API requests to the calendar API. And it will automatically manage our access tokens so we can do everything from the front end. Then once we're logged in, we can retrieve this user's Google Calendar by simply making a call to that API. So the data we're looking at here in the UI are actual events from my Google Calendar. In addition to reading the data, we can also create, update, and delete data. For example, if I click this Add Event button, it's sending an insert request to the API and adds a new item to my calendar. So now I know to stop working and have some fun about an hour from now. But first we need to write some code. I'm working from an Angular app and assuming that you have Angular Fire installed. But even if you're working with a different framework, the process is still very similar. The only thing we need is Firebase Auth. We don't need to save anything in our backend database or do anything with cloud functions. The next thing we'll need to do is set up a script to initialize the Google API client. Instead of using the Angular HTTP client, we'll use the Google APIs client, which will automatically handle all of the access token stuff for us. And the script is pretty lightweight if you're worried about performance. The next thing we'll do is set up an authentication service that will log in the user and make requests to the API. Inside the service, we'll import Angular Fire Auth and also Auth from the main Firebase SDK. Then we'll need to declare a global variable for GAPI or Google API. It is possible to strong type this and I'll show you how in the main article, but they're community maintained types and I think they're screwed up for Google Calendar, so I'm going to just leave them out altogether for this video. So you'll want to use the Google Calendar API reference as the main source of truth for your documentation. The next thing we'll do in our service is set up a user property, which is an observable of the Firebase user. And we'll also declare the calendar items that we want to use in the UI here, which is an array of objects. From there, we can inject Angular Fire Auth in the constructor. This is where we will initialize GAPI, and then we'll define our user as the Angular Fire Auth state. I'm going to write init client as its own method. And the first thing that you do is you initialize or load the main client library. Then you'll initialize the client libraries that you want to use, which in our case, it will be authentication version two and Google calendar version three. This is the point where we'll set up our credentials and our scopes for the APIs that we want to use. The first value is the API key, which we can find directly in the Firebase console if you go to project settings. Then the second value is your OAuth client ID, which you can find in a variety of places, but you'll want to go to the Google Cloud Platform console for this one. You can go to the console and then find it under the APIs and Services tab. It's going to be your web OAuth 2 client ID. When you see that, you'll want to go ahead and click on it, which will take you to this page, and you'll want to update the authorized JavaScript origins to localhost 4200 or whatever local port you're working on. The third argument is an array of discovery docs. There are so many different APIs at Google that they can't all be described in a single package. So you pass in the discovery docs for the APIs that you want to use. In our case, we're using version three of Google Calendar. And lastly, you pass in the scopes that you want the user to grant permission to. Every API has different levels of permission that the user can grant access to. In our case here, we want to fully manage the calendar. So we're going to ask for the full calendar scope. 
but you should only request permission for the things that you actually need. So if you only needed to read the items, you should just request read-only access. So that will initialize Gappy in our project and manage the access tokens for us so we can easily make requests to this API when the user is authenticated. The last thing we'll need to do with the initialization is load in calendar version 3, and then we can console log when it's ready. If you've worked with Google OAuth and Firebase, you're probably used to writing your OAuth code with just one or two lines of code. Unfortunately, we're going to need to increase that code to about five lines. Instead of using Firebase to log in initially, we'll call Gappy Auth2 get auth instance, and then we'll say await Google Auth sign in. This is pretty much identical to doing sign in with pop-up with the Firebase SDK. It creates a JSON web token that logs the user into the client app, which we can then access by saying get auth response dot ID token. At this point, the user is logged into Google, but they're not logged into Firebase. Firebase has a way to sign in manually when you already have a JSON web token, which we can do by calling Google auth provider dot credential and pass in that token. Then we can use that to sign the user into Firebase by calling Angular Fire auth sign in and retrieve data with credential and pass in the credential. In the main article, I'll show you an alternate approach where you log the user into Firebase first and then set up the scopes from there, but then you have to manage your own tokens manually, which tends to be a lot more work overall. From here, we'll go ahead and add a logout method really quick, and now we're ready to start making API calls to Google Calendar. Gappy is promise-based, so we can set this up as an async function, and we'll call Gappy Client Calendar Events .list. And again, because we don't have the strong type, we'll have to look at the API docs manually. But we're really just looking at a handful of arguments here to get the items from the calendar that we want. So here we're requesting the primary calendar, all events that start in the future, and we'll order them by start time. I'd recommend console logging the response so you can see what the actual data payload looks like. In this case, the actual calendar items we want to show in the UI are found on events.resultItems. So once the user is logged in, all they have to do is trigger this getCalendar method, and that will return the events from their calendar. Because we requested the full calendar scope, we have full CRUD access to their calendar. Before I write this method, I'm first going to set up a helper function called hours from now that takes a number as its argument and then returns the number of hours in the future as an ISO string. You probably don't need it, but I'm just using it to make our code a little bit more readable. To add a new event, we'll call Gappy Client Calendar Events Insert, and then we have a whole bunch of different options that we can use here to format the actual calendar event. It will go on the primary calendar, and then we'll have a start object that has a date time and then also a time zone, and then of course an end time. And lastly, we'll add a summary and a description to give it some interesting content. Then as a final touch, whenever we insert an event, we'll then retrieve our calendar events again, which resets them on the service, so it'll look like the event updates in real time on our UI. So that takes care of all the hard work. Now let's go into our app component and put this service to use. The first thing you want to do is inject the auth service in the component constructor, and you'll actually want to make it a public property, even though it says private here in the source code. From here, it's just a matter of adding a little bit of markup to show our user and the calendar items. We can unwrap the user observable by doing ng if followed by auth.user async, and then we'll set it as a template variable called user. That provides their Google Plus information like the photo URL and their display name. All the other methods can be treated as event handlers, so we'll just let the user click buttons to log in and make calls to their Google Calendar API. And lastly, our calendar items are an array on the service, so we can loop over those with ng4, and they're already unwrapped, so we don't need to use the async pipe here. And that will give you a whole bunch of data for each item, which you can inspect in the console. If you followed along with the code, you should see a response object in the console. It's all the data that's returned from the Google Calendar's API, including the items on that user's calendar. So now you know how to get a hold of a Google Calendar that's owned by a Firebase user. But more importantly, you know how to use the Google API client library to access all of the hundreds of different APIs offered by Google. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you're serious about building a product, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get unlimited access to all premium content, which includes multiple full courses and a full-length book, as well as one-on-one -on -one project support to help you get your app built and shipped faster. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.